Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name is Acacia. Today we're going to be doing a book haul. Uh, this is July book haul part one, maybe part only. I'm not sure. We shall see. Um, no, I've got some others coming. Mm. Um, yeah, so we've got quite the pile here. A um, couple of these books came out today couple of them have been out for a bit um all sorts of ranges and then some of them I ordered from Waterstones no foils some of them I ordered from foils a month or two ago so they're coming in now so I think yeah I think we're good so let's dive in. The first one was sent to me for review. I've read it. I read it on NetGalley and they sent me a final copy. This is What Unbreakable Looks Like. This is Kate McClellan. Um, this is a, this is a hard book to read. So this is about Lex who is taken and trafficked. Um, and she then comes back and doesn't know how to live a normal life. Um, there's triggers for sexual assault and um, trafficking and of abuse and violence. Um, I thought this book was really interesting. I'm gonna do a review of it, so that's coming up. Then we have this one, which I've read. This is Heat Stroke. Um, this is by Hazel. Barkworth. Um, it's got stuff on it, which is not good. Um, this is the story of a, it's a thriller. And the story starts with a mother having a group of girls over at her house for a sleepover. And one of the girls from the friend group did not come that time. And the next morning, all of the girls go into town to go shopping. And the mother receives a call from the girl who didn't come's mother. And she asks, you know, have you seen my daughter? You know, she isn't home yet. And she goes, she didn't come last night. And she goes, well, what do you mean? She said she went. And she just didn't show up. And so this is that story. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Then we have Forbidden. This is by Beverly Jenkins. This was, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really interesting. Um, it's the story of a relationship between a man who passes for white and a black woman and loving her outs him as black. Um, or to be with her, he has to out himself as black. Um, so that's that story. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really interesting. Um, then I found this one used, which was a nice surprise. I think someone was getting rid of all of their BOTM um, books. Um, I kind of get it. But um, in this case, this is The Boyfriend Project. This is by Farrah Rashan. Um, this one is from May so yeah um this one is the story of a girl who is treated cheated on by a guy with two other girls and the three of them end up becoming friends after they um confront him and they make a pact to stay single and invested in each other and themselves for six months no dating and then Sami is suddenly intrigued by Danielle, who comes in to her workplace. <laughs> that was loud. Um, then we have Patsy. This is by Nicole Dennis Ben. Um, this is. So this one, I'm, 
I'm not 100% sure about the plot, only because I've heard that the story is about a young woman who falls in love with a friend years ago, and she ends up staying where she is and having a daughter and in, in Jamaica. And her best friend moves to New York. Um, so years later, um, this woman decides that she wants to be happy and be with the woman that she loves. So she leaves and leaves her daughter. But I have some feeling that there is trans representation in this. So I'm not sure if her daughter is trans or if I'm completely misunderstanding. Um, so if you know, let me know because I'm 100% I'm excited about this. I just want to have my facts right. Then we have Saving Ruby King by Catherine Adele West. This is the story of a young girl whose mother is murdered in Chicago South Side and the police are just like, eh, gang violence, it's fine. And she is then left with an abusive father and her best friend is trying to help her, but her best friend's father is a pastor and says, you need to leave her alone and not, not help her. And um, it's the story of that relationship. So I'm very excited about that. Then we have The Porpoise. Um, this is by Mark Haddon. This one is supposed to be, so from what I understand, a young girl grows up with a wealthy father and something in their life is very wrong. Um, she can't get away, so she finds solace in books, and she ends up coming up with a world in her mind um, from the pages of the book, and she can't tell where one begins and the other ends. With my luck, this is going to be a sexual assault book. It's just how things go for me. And, uh... I'll read it and I will probably get a lot out of it. Um, this is What Have I Done by Laura Dockrell. This is her nonfiction talking about what it was like when she had psychosis after her pregnancy and during her pregnancy. Um, this is just something that I was really interested in. So I picked that up. This is Starling Days. I've ordered it three times in the U.S. and none of the three times I ordered it did it show up. So, um, yeah, I was refunded all three times, but it was very frustrating. So I just ordered it from the U.K. This is about Mina, who is found at the George Washington Bridge by a patrol car. Um... She tries to convince the patrollers that she's not about to jump, but they don't believe her. Her husband is called to pick her up. So now, to help her get away from everything, he takes her away from New York and brings her to London. Um, and this is all about failing mental health, mythology, and being a woman. So we shall see. This is right up my alley. It should be good. So I'm excited. This one I was sent unsolicited. I did not request this. This is The Suicide House by Charlie Donnell, Donnelly. Um, this one is about a high school, an elite private high school, where... A group of kids go into the woods and two students are gnarly, like really badly killed. Um, and then when they come out, 
um, a teacher is convicted of the murder and something is wrong because the students that went in there that didn't die are now committing suicide. So there's that. And then I picked up these two. I already own them, but I passed them along to Sarah because I wanted these because these are signed. So I bought these again. Um, this is Get a Life Chloe Brown and this is Take a Hint Danny Brown. They are by Tala Hibbert. They are about, um, this one is about a young girl with a uh, chronic illness and a computer geek and she meets Red and she um, tries to live a life that she didn't already live. And this one is about Danny and Danny does not really have a thing for romance. She's not really looking for a relationship, but then there is an accident at her work and her um, security guard at the job that she's been flirting with rescues her from the workplace and everyone starts shipping them because a picture of them has gotten out. Um, but she's looking for a hookup. Then this one was sent to me for review. This is Good Morning Monster. The Therapist Shares Five Heroic Stories of Emotional Recovery by Katherine Gilder, Gildner. Um, this one I picked up because the author of Maybe You Should Talk to Someone blurbed it. Um, five Patients, Five Heroic Journeys to Recovery. Laura, a young woman abandoned at the age of nine with two younger siblings, is isolated in a cottage in winter. Danny, an, inc an incredulous Cree man, unable to grieve the loss of his wife and daughter. Peter, a successful but lonely musician suffering from sexual dysfunction. Alana, a certified genius whose so sociopathic father abuse resulted in a severe personality disorder. And Madeline, a glamorous workaholic whose mother has greeted her each morning with Good Morning Monster. So I'm very excited about that. Then we have this. This is a nonfiction. This was gifted to me. This is They Were Her Property, White Women and as Slave Order Owners in the American South by Stephanie E. Jones Rogers. Um, so this is the conversation of the fact that white women in the South were not allowed to own property, but they were allowed to own slaves. And they were absolutely merciless with their slaves because they felt that was all the control they had. So I am very curious to read about this. This is from Yale University Press. Um, this should be really interesting. Um, I'm just very curious about this. Um, I don't think I've ever thought about the fact that Southern women weren't allowed to own anything but slaves, so they would probably be pretty ruthless. Then I picked this up used, which is why it's so battered. This is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Um, I was brought, this was brought to my attention by Amanda from Naughty Librarian. Um, I'm very excited to dive into this. This is, all I know is that it's what if villains had superpowers. It's all I know. So I enjoyed V.G. Schwab's Darker Shade of Magic, Magic series when I wasn't into fantasy. So I'm assuming that now that I'm into fantasy, I'll like it even more. This is Andre Lloyd, Andre Lloyd, Sister Outsider. Um, this is a beautiful edition. Um, this is a essay collection and yeah, it's on social science. So yes, I'm very excited about this. So it's very beautiful though. Then these two I was gifted. Then there's these two. This is the Calculating Stars and this is the Faded Sky. Um, this is by Mary Robinette Cowell. All I know is this has to do with women scientists. And it's supposed to be really good. And this one is supposed to touch more on um, women's rights and racism. So um, I picked it up to kind of 
read both. I This one I heard was good and I was curious about it. This one I heard had more political statements, so I was even more curious about it. But I couldn't read the second one without reading the first one, so obviously. Then this one was a whole bunch of crazy to figure out. Like, I... I I ordered it from three different places. I was trying to get a signed copy. I didn't know if any of them were going to have signed copies. So I canceled all three of those orders and I ordered it from book people because book people had signed copies. And then it turned out that my local bookstore had a signed copy. I did not know this when I ordered the one from book people. So I just a whole bunch of crazy, whole bunch. But this is a signed first edition of Otesha Mosvik's Death in Her Hands. Um, I think I have a pre-order of a signed copy from the UK as well. Am I going to cancel it? Probably not. Um, this is the story of a woman who comes across a note that says her name was Magda. Nobody will know I ever kill who killed her. It wasn't me. Her Here is her body and there is no body. And... Becoming obsessed with solving the mystery, our narrator imagines who Magda was and how she met her fate. This is just Otesha Masvik. I'm super stoked and I keep trying to read it, but I'm in the middle of two other books right now, so I haven't done it yet. Then we have this. This is the other one I'm like desperate to read, but I haven't picked up yet because I'm super excited about it. This is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This was... Um, I. I had the mothers. I used to own the mothers, but I owned a ARC copy. I need a coffee break. Hold on. It's very full. Oh, I owned an ARC copy that I found at a Goodwill. Um, for those of you who don't know what Goodwill is, it is a charity shop. That's the best way I can explain it. Um, dollar books, basically. But um, they sell art. They're not supposed to, but they do. Um, so I found the mothers there, and it was torn. It was ripped. It was just completely damaged. And I bought it anyway because it was a dollar. I think maybe it was 50 cents. And then I read it, and I really enjoyed it. I just never really talked about it because it was such bad condition. I just didn't want to put it on the camera. Um, so I still need to buy that one. This one I'm super stoked about. This one is about sisters, one who passes for white and the other one who could pass for white, but she has a very dark daughter and she goes home to live in her black community and the other one goes off to live in a environment where she is passing for white with a racist husband. So I'm very excited about this. Then this one came out today. This one I am super stoked about. I got this on NetGalley. Um, and then I ordered the final copy because I was so excited. This is Cinderella is Dead um, by Kaylin Bar Barron. Um, this one should be great. I'm really excited about it. It looks very pretty. It's got all sorts of designs in it. Very nice. So this is a dystopian world um in fairy tale land it's been 200 years since cinderella found her prince but the fairy tale is over um now teen girls are required to appear at an annual ball where men in the kingdom select wives based on the girl's display of finery if a suitable match is not found the girl is not chosen or not heard from again um and this is about sophia who would rather marry her childhood friend aaron um, the two friends parade around in front of suitors at the ball. Sophia makes a desperate decision to flee and finds herself hiding in Cinderella's mausoleum. There she meets Constance, the last known descendant of Cinderella, and her stepsisters. Together they vow to bring down the king once and for all. And yes, one of those stories. I'm very excited. Then we have this one. This one I found on NetGalley and it was blurbed by Roxanne Gay and I absolutely loved it on NetGalley. So now I have it in person, which I'm so excited for. Um, yeah, this is Thin Girls. This is about, this is by Diane Clark. This is about two girls, one who feeds herself constantly and the other one 
who constantly deprives herself. A dark, edgy novel that explores body image, queerness, toxic diet culture, and the power of sisterhood, love, and friendship. I am stoked. It is going to be very good. Then this one came out today. This is Savage Song by Paul Tremblay. This is the author of The Cabin at the End of the World. I needed it so bad. I'm so excited. This is just, you know, pandemic goodness. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's not mixed media, but it looks like there's some interesting formatting. So, yes, this is very exciting. It's kind of like um, Cabin at the End of the World. They did the same thing in that. And then this one was a gift from Marissa. Um, I'm so grateful to her. She is so wonderful. She uh, Now I owe her a birthday present. This is her birthday present to me because she's never bought me a birthday present. I don't know where she gets this, but, you know, basically I mentioned that there were three books that I couldn't afford. I know it looks like I buy a lot of books, but I'm going to tell you right now, the amount of money I spend on them is very little because... I do a lot of couponing and points and I buy a lot from a specific bookstore that does 30% off of the cover. Like it's, it's been a lot. I've been buying from, it. it's just a whole thing, but I couldn't afford this one because it was full price. So Marissa was sweet enough to buy this for me and I'm so excited and I'm so grateful and she's absolutely the sweetest human on the planet and it just makes me so happy and like just so happy but yes this is fantastic so this is Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead um I am hoping that she'll be able to buddy read it with me or something because that would be great that would be really great um that one's just really sad. And uh, I don't know the full premise of it. Um, and I don't want to know the full premise of it because I know it's just really sad and based on a true story. So that's all I want to know. Um, yeah. So that is everything. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, click that subscribe button down below. Um, I post videos every Tuesday and Thursday. And da, 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 I have a Patreon account if you are interested in subscribing and supporting me. A dollar will get you into the book club. This month we are reading Black Girl Unlimited, which is quite interesting. I have a lot of thoughts on it. And if, if you are interested in buying any of the romance novels that you have seen in this haul, you can go to my affiliate link down below for The Ripped Bodice, which is in LA. Um, if you buy from that, then I get a small commission, which is just very helpful. It will go to books. Do not worry. And yes, I am so grateful for all of you. I am so wonderfully happy that I got so many gifts. A lot of those were gifts. I didn't. So here's the thing. Um, I had a fair amount of people who I was talking to and I really struggled with the fact that I wasn't really able to buy books this month. And um, several of my friends and subscribers were lovely enough to send those books. Not all of them wanted to be mentioned. Not all of them wanted to be shouted out. So I didn't do that. But you know, there was a fair amount of people who were just really wonderful. Um, my best friend sent me some, another one of my friends sent me some, some subscribers sent me some. Um, there was just a good amount of, of gifting that happened. So I'm just, I'm super grateful. Um, the Cinderella is dead and the surviving song I pre-ordered in March. Yeah. Yeah, I pre-ordered those a while ago, so they were already paid for. But yeah, I, I'm i very lucky to have the people I have in my life. Um, and I'm very lucky to have the support that I have for my habit. Because that's what it is. It's a habit. 
and it looks like I might be getting a job soon, hopefully in a bookstore, because I have to feed my habit. <laughs> but yeah, I love you all. I will talk to you all in my next video, and I'll see you there.